Welcome back to the Bloomberg Google Hangout in the heart of downtown U.S. Africa Business Forum here in Washington, D.C. at the Mandarin Hotel. I'm joined now uh, by Congresswoman Barbara Lee of Alameda County, Oakland, Berkeley, uh, and someone who's uh, an expert in Congress on, uh, on the continent of Africa, on health care in Africa, uh, now serving on the State Foreign Operations Appropriations Subcommittee, uh, and uh, somebody who's really been involved in a lot of, uh, a lot of the fights over the years. I got to ask you uh, about health care in Africa, in particular HIV AIDS. Uh, President Bush, on his way out, with your help uh, as co-author of the legislation, uh, put together the PEPFAR program. I think it was actually a continuation of some existing work that was going on. How is that going now? We don't hear as much about it uh, over the last few years. Uh, how's that fight going? Bring us up to date a little bit. Well, I tell you, it's going um, very well, and I really am happy to be with you this morning because you were there when we were doing this legislation, and, and I want to just give you a little history about this. When President Bush was elected, uh, the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus was then uh, a great leader, Congresswoman Annie Bernice Johnson. Mm -hmm. So we visited uh, President Bush over at the White House, and I had worked on HIV and AIDS uh, on the domestic front and had worked with uh, my predecessor uh, and my former boss, Congressman Ron Dellums. So I was placed on the agenda to pitch the whole issue of HIV and AIDS to President Bush and why we needed a global response. And that began the whole uh, work on PEPFAR. And then in, sep in December of that year, we wrote to the president and asked him to lay out in his State of the Union what a global response would look like. And I still have that letter. It was very wonderful because every member of the Black Caucus signed it, and we laid out the framework for PEPFAR. And then in his State of the Union speech, he announced it. So we were very proud of that moment, and we continue to work on the legislation with the White House, great example of bipartisanship, then worked with, once it got out of the House, worked with Senator Kerry and Senator Frist in the Senate to get the Senate involved and engaged in it. And so we have seen many, many people, lives have been saved, uh, millions of lives have been saved. The rate of infections are down, but there's a long way to go in terms of achieving an AIDS-free generation. One of the issues now as an appropriator is the funding, making sure that given the economic constraints that we're in, this, um, I say, still recession, and the fact that there are some who don't want to spend any money for any foreign aid, we have, you know, to maintain the momentum and scale up. Otherwise, I think we could go backwards. It's really a defining moment. Do you worry about, with all the talk of investment, uh, that there might be less money uh, in, in terms of development, in terms of uh, sort of direct contributions by the United States government to African countries, or are th these two things that can coexist? No, I think they coexist, and I think it's, it's aid and trade. We can't forget that we have to help have a foundation for healthy societies and for healthy people. You can't engage in uh, trade and commerce if people are sick. And so I think that the combination and the coordination between U.S. investment and U.S. AID, US aid is, is the proper focus and must maintain that balance because otherwise uh, you're going to have people who have, of course, um, I won't say relied on, but in many ways have depended on some contribution from USAID uh, and NGOs not only for their survival, but for their uh, moving forward in terms of the quality of life. So we've got to do both. If you look at uh, USAID's funding uh, in 2012, last uh, year that I had numbers for, nine of the top 20 countries in terms of aid from the United States were in, uh, were in Africa. So that I mean, it sounds like what you're saying is that that, that can't be something that uh, diminishes going forward. No, it can't diminish. And, and let me just say, the public really believes that we spend about 25% <laughs> on foreign aid when in fact it's less than one percent and so I hope that people understand that one if, all, if you think about it in a national security context it's really key in terms of our national security but secondly it's very key in terms of helping countries move toward economic development and less uh, dependency on U.S. tax dollars because of course we're helping people and communities and nations move forward in terms of their uh, economic, health care, and educational systems. Uh, you mentioned trade, and I don't want to date you, but you've been working on trade uh, with Africa for a long time as well. You've got a, a coastal area, a port there. Uh, 
what is the value of uh, increased trade with Africa to the United States, uh, to your district in particular? It's like, uh, first of all, when I was in the California legislature, I took several trade delegations. This goes way back to the 90s. To the I said continent. I didn't want to date you. <laughs> this is really dating me. But I, my first visit to Africa was 1980 to Sierra Leone. So I've been working on Africa issues for about 34 years. And so we took several delegations to Africa, and I was a member. Uh, then Speaker Willie Brown appointed me to, to be on the California State World Trade Commission. Mm -hmm. So I led the effort to open a trade office, first time uh, in history, in on a, the continent of Africa. And we opened it in South Africa. Unfortunately, the trade offices now aren't there, which is a real shame because it really did encourage commerce and trade. Fast forward to today, I think it's very important that um, the Port of Oakland in my district in California and small minority owned businesses get more engaged on the continent of Africa. I'm going to lead a trade delegation after the election in November uh, to Africa because oftentimes my businesses don't uh, are not able to to participate in the larger uh, trade delegations that are led out of Washington and out of the Department of Commerce. But yet, many of my companies are ready. They want to invest, and especially uh, African American-owned businesses have a natural connection to the continent of Africa. And so, it's very important that California companies, even with the distance and the costs involved really get vested and invested on the continent. Otherwise, we're going to lose our opportunities to benefit from the economic activities, but also to contribute to the development of the continent. What do you say to folks who are worried about risk, whether you're talking about health, I mean, we just had an Ebola outbreak, whether you're talking about terrorism, Boko Haram has been uh, all through the headlines lately. Uh, the president has uh, designated some money for uh, counterterrorism efforts. Uh, I think uh, a lot, lot of that would focus on Africa. What, what do you tell folks who are worried about risks in, in investment? Well, there are risks in investment anywhere in the world. And I think what's important is that people assess, and we have certainly the State Department, Department of Commerce helping to assess risk. We have risk insurance. We have a, a way to make sure that our companies and the, the employees are, are safe. But we have to be careful. I mean, and I'm not saying this is a, a world that is risk-free, and so we have to be prudent in how we and where we go, but I certainly would not discourage anyone from investing or working on the continent because it's a vast continent, and in fact, uh, yes, there are many risks associated not only with uh, countries such as in Nigeria with Boko Haram. I mean, we've got to get these girls back, and that's been part of what we've been working on for a couple months, but we've got to make sure that people know that most countries are safe, uh, they're ripe for investment, and members of Congress are going to Africa more and more. We see more companies going there, and certainly we want to make sure that people know that uh, the environment is, is safe. And where it's not safe, we know how to make sure that people know what to do and what not to do. Last question for you. Uh, President Obama has put together uh, this summit here. Uh, it's year six of his presidency. How's he done on Africa? Where does he stand now? And what do you hope to see in the next two years? This is a historic summit. I mean, we've never, and I was at the reception yesterday in the Kennedy uh, caucus room on the Senate side. And to be there with nearly 50 heads of states, foreign ministers, first as an African American whose roots are on the continent, I was very humbled and felt very proud of our president that he has moved the agenda along. Several years ago, without necessarily congressional or White House support, we held a conference that was called Africa Matters. And it was minority-owned businesses, activists, human rights activists came to Washington to participate in that conference, led by the late uh, Leonard Robinson. And I thought yesterday, Africa matters finally. In U.S. foreign policy, it matters on Capitol Hill. We had our leadership there. So I think this is a very historic moment. But we can't lose the momentum now. We've got to make sure that uh, our policies, our trade policies, are are what they should be and make sure the workers are protected, make sure the workers uh, who benefit from the business opportunities are paid fair wages, that 
international labor standards are adhered to, that environmental degradation is not going to take place as a result of some of our trade policies. So we have a lot to do and a long way to go. But I tell you, this president, he has moved the ball forward, uh, and I'm so proud of what he has done and continue to work with him on uh, all the issues relating to the continent. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, it is always a pleasure. I've, not, <laughs> I've known you more years than either one of us would like to remember. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. here at the Bloomberg Google Hangout at the U.S. Africa Business Forum. We'll be back shortly.